Hey guys and welcome to this video. Today is all about mid surfaces. Mid surfaces are a great way to reduce the number of elements you need to achieve your level of precision. And it's applicable for sheet metals and every thin structures which are large in two dimensions and very small in one dimension. But let me tell you that in a minute. Before I go into the background of mid surfaces, I wanted to tell you that from now on I will be using Hyperworks 2020. There has been an update, Hyperworks X no more, but now it's 2020. So stick with me. There's uh, not much of a change in terms of layout, so you will feel at home. And now it's time to go into the theory of mid surfaces. Well, it's just an introduction, really. But um, let's say you have a structure which looks maybe like this. Oh, that was not very good. Like this. And let's say you have all of your corner points fixed. And the fourth one I'm not drawing. And you have a forest in the middle. Now what you're getting is um, you, you get a lot of bending moments. And that means that you would have to just mesh this part with a set of number um, with, with multiple elements over the thickness. So one is not enough, two is not enough, three would be, well, yeah, okay. hardly enough, four or five. You see where I'm going with this? Um, this means a lot of elements. And one way to represent such structures is by defining a mid surface. And once again, I'm excusing for my, I'm sorry for my bad drawing skills, but you can imagine that I could define a plane which is perfectly in the middle of this uh, plate and this is representing the geometry. Well, what about the thickness? Because it's not there anymore in the geometry. Well, this goes into the property. And in the property it is um, defined as a numerical value for each element. And because the element has a normal, you can assign the stiffness matrix in a correct way. All right, that's about it for a quick introduction what a mid surface is. Now let me show that in a example. I've opened up here um, Hyperworks 2020 and what I'm doing now you can do at home as well because the files are in each um, Hyperworks installation. So go to your Altair folder then 2020 um, Hyperworks, no, Tutorials actually, then Hyperworks Desktop, then Hypermesh or HM, and then there is Clip Mid Surface. Just drag it into, I love this feature, and drag it over and you will be asked if you really want to load it because it's a different version. All right, we want to load it and you have your part. Uh, once again, the visualization, left click, right click, middle mouse click, so that you not intimidated by those um, signs at my mouse. All right, so let's see. There's a part which fulfills the requirements, so it's rather thin in one dimension, the thickness. And you can extract a mid-surface very easily by just going to geometry ribbon and then mid-surfaces, choose the automatic one, select all the surfaces by holding the left mouse button and just draw a rectangular and click on its surface. Clicking the middle mouse button would do the same action. And what the, what the software does in the background, it creates another component. So you had this original component and it creates another component called mid, middle surface. And this is the component where your mid surface is in, in. And if you hide the geometry of the initially or the original component, you can see very clearly that it's just one surface, which is in the middle of this surface. All right, so far so good. And here's a perfect example where I can, could show you the new features of the geometry generation in Hyperworks 2020. Well, let's say um, the mid surface algorithm would have done something wrong here and you would have to delete the surface, right? Well, let me go back here and select the surface. <clears throat> also a very good feature. You don't have to use the F2 menu, you know, this, this menu to delete anymore. You just could select the surface and hit the delete key and that does it. 
Now, if I want to create or recreate the surface, I could go to surface and to extend and select the line and drag it over. And now I would have to see the holes and cut through it and, you know, lots of stuff. But actually, in Hyperworks 2020, you could do it like this. You just show the geometry, maybe in a wireframe, and you just extend it once again. You select the edge. Now you just auto trim intersecting surfaces. I'm not quite sure if you uh, if you have to maintain edge angles, but I will select it. And now you drag it across to the other point. Hit enter and let's see if that works. Turning back from wireframe to shaded geometry and you see the holes are there just because it's intersecting. That's really cool. Um, little thing here is that it did not quite get to the line here. We can trim it here or stitch it, stitch it, I should say. And for stitching, you have to define the tolerance. I know that the gap is 0 0.03, something like that. So I select 0 0.04. And that's the important thing here. I will click on the edge which I want to keep. So clicking here would keep this edge. Clicking here would keep that edge. So I want to click here and boom, there you go. Now meshing. Meshing can be done in different ways, right? So <clears throat> the first way is to just use the simple old version of um, hitting F12. And uh, if it's ever not showing up, just click once, once somewhere in the graphical area and hit F12 again, and then it will show up. Select surfaces, mesh it, adjust the density, or even use a batch mesh QE optimized sort of mesh. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is in the new version of Fiberworks, you have meshing options right here. For example, a batch mesher. And if you click on the batch mesher, you can select the parameters and criteria right here. For example, the parameters. Um, I tend to use just to open open a, a default um, version here, maybe general eight millimeter. And eight millimeter, I know it's much too large here, but it's a good standard to to just use it. And then change the element size to maybe one one millimeter. And what else? Um, select maybe the holes. I know the diameters of the holes is. I think here it's two and this is around seven. So what I want to do is I want to remove the small holes. So I check here 1.5 and treatment is remove. And then here I want a washer. So this is seven. So it should be, it should be in this, but just to be sure, I'm not quite sure if it's diameter or radius, but Let's go with that. Washer here, element size. Well, I tend to use auto here. And okay, I think that's about it. Let's see if we can go with the parameter set. So basically one millimeter, hit apply. And it says, okay, I have an error in fillets tab. Okay, let's check that. See this little yellow sign, I can hover over it and the radius is less than twice the element size. All right, then I will do two because element size is one and hit apply. That's okay. And now I check the criteria because target element size should be one. And now there's another recompute here. I will go into that um, later, but here I will get an error because these values are not correct. I have to change them manually, I guess. You see, it's a little bit. You have to be careful when resizing this window. So ideal is okay, but good should be maybe 0 0.95 or 9. Is it too, too inverse minimum sequence and minimum size? Okay, fail. All right, this is minimum size. So worst maybe 0 0.6. Fail at 0 0.6. Warren at 0 0.7. Good at 0 0.8. I'm just guessing values here, right? 
Um, and what's, what's the matter here? It's a small difference between burst and fail. All right, so let's say fail is at 0 0.5. And good is, what's the matter here? Too close to ideal. Really? All right, uh, let's see um, if it accepts 0 0.7 and here 0 0.6. I'm just guessing the values here. I'm sorry about that. 0 0.2. What's the matter with you? Still too big. 6.5. Hmm. Good size is too close to ideal size. Ideal size is 1. Let's see. Let's go with 0 0.5 still problem no all right 0 0.5 is okay and then we go with 0 0.3 here 0 0.25 here all right now we found a parameter set and that's that's what's bothering bothering me here um i don't see a way to automatically recompute it and there was a way and i will show it later on the different approach um where you can do that so hit apply hit okay and now um, just select all the surfaces and click mesh or click the middle mouse button. And this will execute the meshing operations. And I expect that I don't see a mesh uh, with the holes here because I said that I want to remove the holes, the smaller holes. And here there should be a washer like that. And it did not work. All right, all right, all right. The washer worked. Okay, let's quickly revert this and check the parameters again. I know that's a two diameter. And what's the removing? So maybe it's really the diameter, but radius? Hmm, not quite sure. Maybe we should work with two. I will check that. Let me just quickly look at that. So the distance panel comes in handy. So distance is two. So radius should be one. No, okay. Uh, let's just quickly look if it worked again. With this different uh, set of parameters. Well, it's not removing those. Why ever? Okay, one more shot. And if it's not working now, Radius below two, so zero until two gets removed. Normally, normally that should work. I cannot change the parameters. Maybe the thing is with the C here. Quickly remove this. Let's see. Let's see if that works. Once again, I can also select the elements here by hitting Control A and just pressing Delete. And once again, go into the batch measure, select maybe just the surface to see if that works. No, it doesn't. All right. Maybe in the different version it worked before. So I know this is working. I'm not sure why it's not working right now, but all right. We'll keep that for now. Okay, the other version, or the old version, how to do it, and there's an actually a uh, recompute button. That's what I wanted to tell you. If you're in the F12 menu, the auto mesh panel, you have batch mesh QE optimize, you could choose QE optimize, choose a different value. So for example, 0 0.5, the one before was one millimeters, right? And now the values are different and the criteria will change. But if I just select the surfaces and hit mesh, it will ask me if it has to recompute the quality criteria using the size of elements um, 0 0.5. And I said, yes, please do that. And then it will mesh with the updated criteria file, which is pretty, pretty cool. All right, now it's iterating and tries to find the perfect mesh. All right, and you can see, all right, mesh has been created. And well, this area definitely has to be taken care of. This mesh does not look 
quite as good as it should. Maybe this is a good option to just simply uh, check for the rebuild option. Let's see. Select elements. Well, maybe just. I want to choose the elements, not by component, but by surface. This one, all right. Well, that's a bit too much. Uh, maybe I will select it differently. Ah, just hitting this button to revert or just to reset the element selector and then just drag a rectangle over here. It's not ideal, but maybe it does the job. So you can see how you can rebuild the mesh. If I would have to mesh it, I would definitely look more into the geometry um, auto cleanup. But that's not uh, the point of this video, so I'm skipping that for now. So when you want to analyze the quality of your mesh, you also can do that by going to elements and then going to edit elements. Now you can see where the element problems are, right? There's this button here where you can change the threshold. Then you can see, all right, I have problems here and you can maybe um, move an area that's maybe an option or maybe move a particular element somewhere else i'm sorry move this element okay here i can move the nodes all right you can see that the element quality will get better if you're using but you don't have to overdo it. Deselect this node by holding shift and deselect it. And I think this node is really the problem. So you can find a uh, value here where all the elements are okay. But as also for this, um, step of the process i would first go more into the geometry clean up and then go into the meshing before i do that but for the sake of this video it was just a, a purpose to demonstrate how to generate and mesh a mid surface all right um if you had variable the thickness in your part you could also apply the thicknesses here and then just use uh, source information from the geometry and then apply it onto the target. But in this case, all has the same thickness, so it's rather boring. But for more complicated parts, this option is definitely a uh, worth looking um, in your mid mesh, uh, mid, mid, mid surface mesh generation process, I should say. Yeah. All right, that concludes this introductionary video to mid surface meshing. The topic itself is pretty, pretty deep. So maybe we have another video where I where where i explain the, the matter in more more uh, yeah more detail on a complicated part um, but for now that's it thanks for watching if you have any questions comments please let me know in, uh, and yeah hit me by email or in the comment section below and yeah thanks for watching and until next time